Welcome, Illumineers and fans of the happiest card game on Earth. My name is John C. You've just been put in the inkwell alongside all the amber cards from Ursula's Return. So normally I do review videos uh, of the cards as they come out across the review season. Uh, but unfortunately, due to work commitments, some real life stuff, and also set championships, uh, trying to win one of those Stitch Rockstars taking up a lot of time, uh, I got really far behind with these. So instead, what we're going to do is a little sort of set overview of all of the cards now. We do go over all of the cards in our weekly live stream this week in ink that happens every Monday evening usually a couple have been Tuesday again work commitments are a thing <laughs> but normally Monday is at 9 30 Eastern uh, where we go over all of these but I normally like to get a video out covering them as well and like I said I've just been really super behind so we're gonna do it this way this time so we'll race through these over the next six videos let you know what's coming up in the set that releases next week it's come around so quick we start off with a one costed inkable 2-2 with one law Augustin Madrigal clumsy dad Storyborn Mentor Madrigal, a common card with art by Eri Welly. And uh, this is a one drop 2 2. We've seen these lots of times. Obviously, the Madrigal keyword is pretty much the only thing that is of note of this card. There is no shift target for Augustine, at least yet. Obviously, the eight drop Megatonic Augustine is on the way, I'm sure. Uh, but for now, at least. Uh, this is your one drop madrigal so if you're building a madrigal deck out um, and you just want to be able to hit something on curve uh, you can do so with this it's inkable it's perfectly fine card nothing to write home about this goes in the madrigal deck and pretty much nowhere else uh, next up a three costed uninkable one three with two law alma madrigal um a family matriarch i think we still don't have a clean english version of this one unfortunately um uh, the, her ability is a tutor, which is very much uh, of note, worth noting, worth talking about. Tutors are a way to go and find a card in a deck, basically. It's a word that comes from magic, but it's basically stuck for all card games. Um, her ability says that when you play this card, you're able to go into your deck and take out a Madrigal card, reveal it, shuffle the rest of the deck, and then place that Madrigal card back on top of the deck uh, with a view to you then drawing it next turn or, or through any other card draw method i guess tutors can be incredibly strong in card games you have to be very careful to not break them and i feel like they've played it very safe here making this um not necessarily draw the card just place it on top of the deck ready to be drawn and kept it to uh, the confinements of madrigals as you'll probably hear me say about pretty much every madrigal card we look at in this set it goes in a Madrigal deck. It doesn't really go anywhere else. I think this one, especially, obviously, because if you're only playing this and no other Madrigals, the ability is useless. Um, this is just going to be there to go and find your Mirabels, who are going to let them quest for even more next turn. Um, yeah, this is fine in a Madrigal deck, otherwise not really one to write home about. A four-costed Inkable 3-3 three, three for two lore. Aerial Singing Mermaid, Storyborn Hero Princess, and Singer 7. Rare card with art by Matthew Robert Davis. Absolutely classic-looking Aerial here. Um, at time of recording, I think we're still waiting to see a few Enchanteds, and I... I did think maybe this might get one. We do have a steel enchanted aerial show, and so maybe not. Maybe they won't do two characters in, in once. It would be, uh, it did not happen before at least, but you know, maybe this is a later. Uh, store champs or a uh, challenge uh, card or something. I don't know. It's, it's beautiful art. Um, interesting card. Not an amazing stat line for a four cost, but obviously that Singer 7 is definitely of note. Um, if any of these sing together cards, one of which we'll look at in a little while, see play um, and this can sing it, I think it gets a good chunk of the way there. But honestly, I feel like the three costed aerial sensational singer that is a Singer 5 and lets you go and find a song is just much more useful than this one. Um, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe those bigger songs will see play more. Obviously, there is a bit of a meme line of Ariel coming down and next turn singing Be Prepared, which, you know, in a in a, in a Mufasa deck, baby, that just hasn't found its Mufasa <laughs> could be something. I'm not sure. Uh, otherwise, yeah, not not super hard on this one. I think um, Sensational Singer still has the edge on it, uh, but amazing art and, you know, a great, great looking card. Next up, a five costed. Inkable 1-5 with 2 lore, Cinderella Melody Weaver, Dreamborn Hero Princess with Singer 9, and Beautiful Voice, whenever this character sings a song, your other princess characters get plus 1 lore this turn. Legendary Car by uh, Miss Tiana Sola, and I'm not super happy, I'm not really that impressed with this one, it's, it's a build around card, um, there's no 9 cost songs in the game currently, so this is either over singing or... 
uh, getting most of the way towards a sing together, but not actually doing it on its own. Um, you know, the princess thing is nice. A lot of the singers, a lot of the Amber uh, singers are princesses, so you are going to get that lore a little bit, um, uh, you know, more often than not. But five costed, singing on six, probably getting hit by Medusa. <sighs> Amber hasn't had the best showing this set, if I'm completely honest with you. There is a couple that are interesting. They're mostly at lower rarities. I think a lot of the bigger stuff in Amber is either very build around E, which is fine. You know, if you're looking at casual play, there's going to be a very fun Madrigal deck. There's going to be a very fun Musketeer deck. It's probably going to be a very fun Princess deck uh, using some of these newer ones. But uh, here on the channel, we mostly look at cards from a competitive angle. Even though we are casual competitive, you st I still kind of think about cards in their best light. And um, yeah, a lot of the Amber stuff just doesn't do it for me. And this one uh, doesn't, I'm afraid. Next up, a four-costed Inkable 3-3 three, three for one law. Cogsworth, Major Domo, Dreamborn Ally. Uh, common card with art by Heidi uh, Nursehofer, I think that is. It's a bit of a blurry version of this one, unfortunately, at the moment. Uh, as you were, whenever this character quests, you may give chosen character minus two until the start of your next turn. Um, I was really unenthused with this until I read the until the start of your next turn. That's not an awful ability, um, just because it's going to shut something down from swinging in and taking this out. If this quested for two lore, I would be much I, I think it's very playable, actually, with two law. Um, I think that's just enough to mean that this probably won't see that much play. Um, but I think this is probably quite strong in limited. I will happily put this down um, and quest away and uh, know that it most likely will survive a turn. Uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, not, not too sure this one will see much play uh, from Cogsworth there. Next up, a one-costed Inkable 1-3 one, for one law. Daisy Duck, lovely lady, dreamborn ally on... Uh, uncommon card with art by Stefano Zanchi. Uh, beautiful art. Love Daisy. Next one's really good looking as well. Uh, this is a stat line we've now seen in every color thanks to this set. I don't think we had an amber one before. We didn't have a sapphire one before and I think we got them both this set. Now maybe we did have amber already. Uh, or maybe we did have sapphire already. I forget. I, I know that there was one missing and we got it here. <laughs> um, you know, fine stat line uh, it's a great stat line for teeth and ambitions that isn't seeing that much play at the moment but did for a little while so maybe an amber ruby deck uh, that wants to build around it uh, could see it otherwise chances are this quest for eternal 2 obviously worth bearing in mind in case we get a daisy duck floodborne but we currently don't have one uh, but even still you know perfectly acceptable uh, one drop uh, for the most part uh, another awesome daisy duck card four costed Inkable 2-3 for one lore, Daisy Duck Musketeer Spy, Dreamborn Hero Musketeer, and Infiltration. When you play this character, each opponent chooses and discards a card. A uh, common card with art by Kendall Hale. Um, I do think there's going to be an Amber Emerald discard deck that's very heavy on Ursulas and Songs. If, that, uh, if this card sees play, that's the deck it's going to find playing. Whether or not you're going to be happy putting this down on four getting a single discard uh, but a body rather than playing um you've forgotten me and just having them discard two cards i'm not sure again if we get a daisy that's uh, floodborne and also cares a bit discard which could happen a lot of the dis a lot of the daisy stuff is discard focused uh, you know maybe an emerald floodborne in future sets from daisy that discards cards then i think this one uh, becomes a lot more interesting as it stands, it might see play. I don't think it sees play in a Musketeer deck. Um, most of the Musketeer synergies are more focused around Bodyguard. I don't know whether that, uh, whether this really sees play there because honestly, once it's been put down on the board, it doesn't really matter what happens with this. If you play this and get one lore out of it, it's done its job. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't hate this. I, it's one to watch. Um, if if an Amber Emerald discard deck does come to the full, uh, front line, which I think it could do, uh, this one might find a slot in it. Next up, three-costed Inkable 2-3 for one law, Donald Duck, Musketeer Soldier, Dreamborn Hero Musketeer with Bodyguard, and wait for me, when you play this character, chosen character gets plus one law this turn, uh, uncommon card with art by Joachim van Gool. Beautiful art, by the way. I mean, Joachim just smashed it at the park on everything he's touched in this game, honestly, but this is really, truly amazing. They showed this off in an artist interview, uh, a big full-size version of it. Like, if this doesn't end up on a playmat, I don't know what will. It's beautiful. Love it. Uh, as far as the card goes, you're paying one more for a Simba, uh, basically, but with that ability that lets something quest for one. So, you know what? In a deck, 
that is playing pretty low to the ground and pretty aggro-y. Um, if you, you know, turn one Lilo, turn two Simba, uh, turn three Donald, it's letting that Lilo go for three that turn with two bodyguards in front of it. You know, it's going to be single target removal or, 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 a, or an earlier played uh, board uh, wide removal to get rid of it, which obviously is very prevalent. You know, steel removal has been huge during the, uh, the current meta. Uh, but even still, I don't hate this as an uncommon in a aggro-y deck. Uh, I think this one could sneak in some play, actually. I quite like it. Uh, next up, three-costed Inkable 2-4 for two law. Felix Madrigal, fun-loving family man, storyborn ally Madrigal. Uh, uncommon card with art by Hedvig Hagman Sund. Uh, uh, yeah, it's Madrigal. If you care about Madrigals, this goes in your deck. If you don't, you don't. Uh, next up, three-costed Uninkable 2-4 for one law. Gaston, despicable dealer, storyborn villain. Uh, with dubious recruitment, uh, you can exert this and pay two less for the next character you play this turn. This is a super rare card with art by Brian Kessinger. Awesome art uh, from Brian. Looks fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about this one. The uninkability is probably the thing that makes this Nazi play over Dark. Uh, obviously doing very similar stuff to Dark, although Dark... Uh, is only pay one less for next character. Doc works like a lantern, but that is happening on Doc questing, uh, whereas here you are exerting. So Doc is gaining you lore and a single discount. Uh, Dubious Recruitment here is not gaining you the lore from Gaston, but is providing you with a two ink discount on your next turn. Um, it really depends on what you're wanting to play out on six, uh, I guess, or, or on turn four in this case, four, six, um, there's a good chance you can have both of them out. You know, this is turn later, and then you're playing something mega on five. Um, yeah, I, this if this could see some play. Uh, the stat line is fine, I guess, for three. I just can't make my mind up about this one. I don't know whether the questing with Dark and getting one less is better than not questing with this but getting two less. I, it might be this, honestly. Um, it might be this. You might want to just play both. Maybe Doc and Gaston both go in a deck that just really wants to get some some of the bigger drops out earlier. Want to watch? Definitely worth grabbing a few of these if they're cheap. I feel like they might be to start off with until somebody really cooks it. Um, yeah, interesting card. Uh, one costed Inkable one four with two law. Uh, like if that's all you read on this card, you'd think it was incredible, wouldn't you? Golden Harp, Enchanter of the Land, Storyboard Ally. A uh, rare card with art by Andrea Parisi and the ability stolen away. At the end of your turn, if you didn't play a song this turn, banish this character. Woo-wee, there's the downside of the century. Um, I am bullish on this card. I love this card a lot more than pretty much everyone else I've heard talk about it. They are obviously right, and I'm obviously just playing some magical Christmas land in my head. Um, but I don't mind this card as much as everyone else. Uh, you don't play this on one, obviously. Chances of you playing it on two are pretty magical Christmas land. You need to be really playing one drop Cinderella um, and then on two, singing something with that one drop Cinderella, uh, you know, something like a Strength of a Raging Fire or, or something, and then playing this. And then from turn three onwards, if you want to keep this alive, which it could do, you know, it's, you know, a one four... <sighs> Well, no, turn three, one four, one four can die. Um, yeah, this probably gets two lore and dies. Um, but but still, <laughs> if you can drop this after a whole new world in Steel Song, um, chances are you'll carry on singing stuff, you'll carry on hitting aerials, you'll carry on finding songs. It's inkable. Okay, if this said. Uh, at the end of your turn, if this character is exerted and you didn't play a song, banish this turn. If, if it had a similar sort of caveat that Mr. Smee has, um, I think it would be really, really good. Uh, the fact that you have to play a song no matter what to keep this alive is probably the thing that makes it not see play. But I'm still bullish on it. I, I still think it's good. Um, it just probably isn't. <laughs> uh, next up, a four costed, uninkable three four for two law, goofy musketeer swordsman, dreamborn hero musketeer. Uh, with on gosh, whenever you play a character with bodyguard, you can ready this character. You can't quest for the rest of the turn. Count me in with art by Carlos Luis. This is a rare card. Um, I don't love this one, unfortunately. Big goofy fan. Art's brilliant. Love all the musketeers. Not sure this even sees play in a Musketeer deck, to be honest with you. The uninkability of this card is insane. 
Um, his ability is weird. Uh, your character, your bodyguard characters are meant to be looking after stuff that's exerted. This readies itself. I mean, I guess you can play a character, you can play a bodyguard and not exert the bodyguard. Ready this, and you know, it's two things that are difficult to get rid of as opposed to just the one. I, yeah, I, I don't love this. Maybe if it was in ink. I don't know. Even if it was inkable, I probably still wouldn't play it. Sorry, goof. Three costed inkable, one four with one law. Julieta Madrigal, excellent cook. Uh, Julieta, sorry, I think it is. is that, that's like a H sound. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not super hot on my pronunciations of some of these. Storyboard Mentor, Madrigal's signature recipe. When you play this character, you may remove up to two damage from chosen character. If you remove damage this way, you may draw a card. Uh, uncommon card with art by Cristiano Romero. Uh, I think this is pretty good, actually. I think this one might see play out. I think this will see play outside of Madrigal's, to be honest with you. Um, this is, you know, when she was first revealed, she was considered to be like a, a mini Rapunzel, a budget Rapunzel. Honestly, I think she just kind of turns that deck, uh, just tunes it up a little bit, really. At, at the moment, you're not really wanting to play Gothels on two uh, and just have it sit around for two turns with the Rapunzel. A lot, the, a lot of the lines in that deck are actually wanting six ink to get Gothel and Rapunzel down on one, uh, in one turn, excuse me. Uh, here I can see, um, you know, playing, playing Gothel on two and then guaranteeing... Uh, a draw on uh, on three with this or you know having a good chance of a draw on three with this is actually pretty good uh there's also perhaps a line with snake on two uh in an amber amethyst deck and then snake taking out a two two and then juliet coming down and uh, healing snake back up and drawing um th there's a there's a there's probably some the steel lines maybe uh maybe this after a smee uh yeah i, I like this I, I think this will see a lot of play actually outside of magic L. maybe not a lot of play but it will see play this one i i, I kind of dig it it's a good uncommon three costed inkable four three with one law max loyal sheep dog uh storyborn ally here boy if you have a character named prince eric in play you can pay one less for this character art by stefano zanchi this is a common card it's a you know a fun uh, thematic card but otherwise probably isn't going to see much play if we ever see a one drop eric um, then maybe this comes down on two and is a pretty well static card. It's, you know, at that point, it's, you know, a very telegraphed fox, I suppose. <laughs> um, being able to do four, uh, four damage on turn three. Uh, but until we see a one drop Prince Eric, I, I think this is a, if this is a meme thing, if nothing else. I think we do see a few Prince Eric's here in Amber. One of them, I think, might be okay. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's enough to make Max C play, unfortunately. Uh, the boy is here. Four costed, inkable, two five with one law. Mickey Mouse, leader of the band, storyborn hero with support. And strike up the music when you play this character, chosen character gains support this turn. Uh, uncommon card with art by Felipe Laurentino. Um, bit of a draft king, I think. I think this will do very well in limited. It's a it, support in general is pretty much only useful in limited uh, being able to move around the uh, the strength um in cards and limited when there's very usually very little removal uh, is actually quite powerful the fact that this gives you uh, you know a body coming down on four and then most likely lets your uh, three drop smash into something while your two drop carries on questing or something like that uh, is actually quite a nice line um, I don't think it's good enough for constructive play. I'll be honest with you, I don't think support is good enough for constructive play, honestly. Uh, just being able to move around the strength. And it isn't gain strength, it is just move around strength because you are, you're questing out and therefore not using the strength of the character. Um, I just don't think it's really where it needs to be right now, unfortunately. Uh, pretty card though, love to see the mouse. Obviously, you know, he's going to get a couple in each set at least. Uh, we're happy to see it. Here's the other one. A seven costed uninkable three six for two law. Mickey Mouse Musketeer Captain. Floodborne Hero Musketeer Captain with shift five. Bodyguard Support and Musketeers United. When you play this character, if you use shift to play him, you may draw a card for each character with Bodyguard you have in play. This is our second Amber Legendary with art by Jakob Van Gool. Again, knocking it out of the park with the art. Incredible stuff. I don't love this card. I don't love the fact that it's uninkable. Obviously, you know, rarely am I happy about a card being uninkable. Um, the main thing I don't look about this is that you have to shift him uh, for, the, uh, for the ability to play. So... Um, you have to have at least a Mickey on the board for this to really be uh, of any use, really. Um, if it if you didn't if it didn't have that, I don't think it would be any 
in any way broken. I think it'd be perfectly fine to say this uninkable seven drop comes down on seven and replaces itself. You know, this com this is your turn after be prepared that's then only going to get Medusa anyway and replaces itself. Like, I don't think that is too strong. So the fact that you have to shift him to get the bodyguard uh, to, be, to get the card draw, excuse me, uh, is pretty weak. Now, obviously, a board can look pretty good with a couple of bodyguards and a Mickey behind it. But, you know, any sort of player worth their salt on turn six... Uh, or on this turn seven on the uh, on the play he's gonna clearly see this massively telegraph with a stood up mickey uh behind a bodyguard or two and they're gonna do everything in their power to destroy that mickey and if they can then this is just a dead card in hand um it, the body just isn't good enough for a seven drop without that card draw i think top end of this deck top end of this card you're drawing three or four cards off it that's fine um, but I still feel like Surfer Stitch from set one is arguably just a better version of this card, even without the bodyguard and support. Next up, five costed, uninkable, one five for two lore, Minnie Mouse, Musketeer Champion, Dreamborn Hero, Musketeer with bodyguard and dramatic entrance when you play this character, banish chosen opposing character with five strength or more. This is a super rare card with art by Leonardo G. Michelle. Uh, don't hate this. I, I'm a big fan of any uh, card that is basically an action on a stick. Uh, dramatic Entrance here is uh, World's Greatest Criminal Mind, but it's leaving behind a 1-5 2 law Bodyguard, which isn't awful. Um, I, the, again, uninkability affects the uh, playability of this card. And the other thing is, at the moment at least, you're just not hitting that much with that 5 strength. Um, it's the reason why World's Greatest Criminal Mind is one of in some decks at best um, it's just, just less and less at the moment to be hitting with it it's basically tamatoa's um couple of others there's just not much unfortunately um but if there does end up seeing some larger bodies getting played in the meta i do think this one can come in because you know one isn't great on the uh, on the offensive but this is a defensive card that clears something up it's it's not awful um but it only really is going to see play as a as a meta response, I think. Another five costed on Inkable, three five with two lore, Mirabelle Madrigal, Gift of the Family, Dreamborn Hero Madrigal with support, and saving the miracle whenever this character quests. Your other Madrigal characters gain one lore. Uh, art by Aubrey Archer on this super rare. Um, uh, I'll say it again, it's a Madrigal. If you care about Madrigals, this is the top end of that deck. Um, the fact that the Madrigals of Note are all on Inkable is a slight concern. I haven't really done the math on what that deck looks like and what the Inkable count is. There are six Madrigals in Amber, eight in Amethyst, one in Steel. So you're basically going to be playing six in Amber, eight in Amethyst, uh, and you have four cards left over. You can play the, the Casa location if you really want to lean into it, or just something like four copies of friends or, or what have you uh, and obviously you can trim out some of the madrigals for things like lanterns or or stuff like that i, I think there's a casual deck here i don't think it's going to be very competitive there's you know it's an uninkable five cost that comes down and again dies to medusa i feel like i'm a broken record saying how much dies to medusa but it is a meta defining card um and uh, and it is something we have to think about when we look at newer cards coming into the format uh two costed Inkable 2-2 two -two with one law, Mirabelle Madrigal, Prophecy Finder, Storyborn Hero Madrigal with support, common card with art by Samantha Erdini. Uh, we've seen this stat line a lot. It's fine, perfectly acceptable, comes down on two quests and lets something trade up perhaps. Uh, I did wonder if it was a, a Floodborn target, but it, no, it's the, the, the other Mirabelle we have is, uh, is Dreamborn, so uh, not yet at least, but obviously something to bear in mind. If you really want to flesh out a Madrigal deck in future sets, we may well get a, uh, a Floodborn Mirabelle that this then uh, goes underneath. Next up, a five-costed Inkable 4-5 with two lore Pluto. Uh, Rescue Dog, I think. I've, got, I've only got French versions of this one, unfortunately. Storyborn Ally with the ability that when this character is played, you can remove three damage from chosen characters. Common card with art by Kenneth Anderson. Uh, you know... Rapunzel without the card draw, but a better body. Um, I, yeah, maybe we'll see playing limited. Otherwise, sorry, the best boy, but not a good enough card. Three costed inkable, three three for one law. Prince Eric, seafaring prince, dreamborn hero, prince with bodyguard, common card with art by Lin Dang. Uh, color shifted Hercules from set one. 
uh, uh, nothing really of note here uh, it is a prince and it is in pride lands colors i think that's maybe worth mentioning here uh, there may well be a build using pride lands and princes we now have this and uh, simba in amber that are both sort of you know pretty good on curve plays for that deck uh, that therefore doesn't necessarily have to rely on steel there might be a second color there um, but you know, I'm just I'm I'm trying to find uses for a card that otherwise aren't particularly anything uh, worth note. Um, this is a much more interesting pink area. This is one of my favourite arts in the set. This is part of a two card set that sit next to each other. This is a six costed inkable five five for two law Prince Eric Ursula's groom floodborn hero prince with shift four. Uh, and under Vanessa's spell, while you have a character named Ursula in play, this character gains bodyguard and gets plus two strength. On Kamakar with art by uh, Lasan uh, Koitiu. I apologize because I'm sure I butchered that, Lasan. Um, I like this card, but I think it's because it looks cool. I don't know whether it's actually playable. Uh, a few things are worth note here. I do, it, the, there might, like I said, an amber amethyst, an amber emerald deck that cares about discarding uh, is going to be playing a lot of ursulas and songs this could be something that just sort of quests away and keeps those ursulas safe um obviously if the ursulas are picked off through targeted removal this you know becomes it's still a five five for two i don't know um it's worth noting uh, there's been a fun rules uh, question about this one going around from friend of the channel Joe, uh, also known as Googly Glimmers. Um, if you don't shift this, if you play this on six and you have an Ursula out, uh, Prince Eric cannot exert as he enters. Um, so you really want to be shifting this for it to be a bodyguard on curve. Now, what I don't hate is... Do we have an Eric that comes down on one or two? That's going to be the question. Because really what you want this to do is keep your Deceiver of All alive after she's just sang twice or, or you know, sang and played the card. Uh, because Shift 4 on top of an Eric, uh, or a Morph, I guess. We always have to keep Morph in mind if we're talking about these colours. Shift 4 on top of an Eric comes down. Bodyguard is a 5-7 that quested for two and allows your Ursula Deceiver of All to sing... Uh, and then replay the song and, you know, have better chance of staying alive. It's a great line. I think that's probably the only thing you ever want to do with this card, though. And that's usually not great if there's only one line for it. Next up are two casted inkable, two, three, one law, stitch, alien, dancer, storyborn, hero, alien, common card with art by Aisha Dermagambatova. Um, sure, it's a two cost stitch. It's a, it's a rock star target and a rock star target. We, we, we like it. That's good. If Rockstar comes back in, has fell out of the meta again, unfortunately due to Medusa for the most part. Uh, but if Rockstar comes back in, the um, uh, this this goes in there quite nicely, I think. Uh, next up, forecasted uninkable two four with two law Ursula Eric's bride, floodborn villain princess sorcerer, uh, shift discard a song card and Vanessa design whenever this character quests. Chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a non-character card of your choice. Lasan Koetiu uh, also did this incredible piece of art. They both go so nicely together. Uh, and again, I don't hate this one either. This is a new uh, version of a mechanic shift and then discard is new this time as opposed to paying ink to shift. Uh, this one specifically is shift, uh, discarding a song card. Um, this goes quite nicely onto the two drop Ursula who's already had a look at their hand. So two drop Ursula looks at their hand, discards a song. If they then have something else to hit, another song or a uh, or a non-character uh, card, as this one says, um, you're then going to be able to uh, uh, shift onto this by discarding something of yourself and then uh, questing for two and get rid of something of their hand. Now, you know, you're both going down a card there, which isn't amazing, especially this Amber Emerald deck that I'm looking at doesn't really have much draw in it. So you don't want to be discarding too much of your own stuff. Um, so that isn't great, but you know, if it gets rid of their grab your swords or their be prepared or something, you perhaps don't mind it so much, especially if, um, uh, you know, on Kirby, you can get rid of that. Uh, there's something to be said about this just coming down on four and, and, and kicking on turn five as well, which I don't mind. 
Uh, yeah, Amber Emerald, discard. I kind of want to try and put it together. I kind of want to see if it's a thing. If it is, I think this goes in it. Here's another target for that one. A two-costed Inkable, one four with one law. Ursula, Vanessa, Storyborn, Villain, Sorcerer with Singer, four. Common card with Art by Angela Simpson. Um, Singer fours usually don't see that much play. We had Sebastian way back from set one. Uh, the, the four just isn't a great slot for songs. Most playable songs are three um, or five. So this one kind of sits in the middle. Uh, but again, the fact that it, uh, it, it's a target for that previous one uh, is worth uh, is of note, but otherwise I'm not, not sure this one sees a ton of play, unfortunately. Uh, that's all of the characters. Then we move into actions next. A two-costed, uninkable action, Bruno's Return. Return a character card from your discard to your hand, then remove up to two damage from a chosen character. Uh, uncommon card with art by Christian Romero. Uh, don't see this scene play honestly if this was a song it maybe might have uh, seen it but on its own I just don't think this is worth a slot in the deck one costed inkable action first aid remove up to one damage from each of your characters common card with art by Gonzalo Kenny uh, again I don't there's very very little times at the moment unfortunately that damage is, is stuck around on characters you would love to have this after a big tink doesn't finish anything how often that happens is pretty pretty slim, really. Um, the Amber Sapphire Healing Matters deck has always been really far out on the fringe of playability. It's, I don't even know if this goes in that or if that deck is even a thing anymore, no. Uh, and also, I hate the fact that somebody's hurt a dog. Uh, next up, a seven-costed Inkable Action Song. Look at this family. Sing together seven. And look at the top five cards of your deck. You may reveal up to two character cards and put them into your hand. Uh, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Rare card with art by Julia Riva. Great art on this one. Looks good. Could go into the Madrigal deck, I guess, just from a thematic point of view. Um, but otherwise, um, I, I don't know whether I love these Sing Together cards. I feel like this is probably one of the more playable ones. Um, just being able to dig five and uh, refill your hand with two is pretty solid and chances are with all of the singers in Amber you might be able to sing this with just two characters. Uh, obviously we did see that um, Ariel before that would sing this on her own. Um, yeah, maybe, 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 I don't know whether just the Steel song that we know and love right now sees this. But there might be something that, that flies this, maybe something in a more of an aggressive deck that just needs a bit of fuel to push into the uh, into the late game. Perhaps, uh, although I don't know whether in more of a, an aggro -y deck you're going to take a turn off to turn everything sideways to sing this rather than just quest out. Um, yeah, need, need some playtesting with these sing togethers. Can't really uh, call their their viability just on paper. Uh, next up, full costed uh, inkable action song, Lost in the Woods. Uh, all opposing characters get minus two until the start of your next turn. Uncommon card with art by Ellie. Hurry, um, there's going to be some synergies here with Ruby and that Sisu that then uh, kills everything that's got a lower strength. Uh, until the start of your next turn is definitely worth note as well, therefore it can be offensive or defensive. Uh, this card kind of reminds me of Four Dozen Eggs. Um, may, might see some limited play, but doesn't really find a home out of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, not sure this one's great, unfortunately. Three casted inkable actions, sign the scroll. Each opponent may choose and discard a card for each opponent who doesn't. You gain two law. This is an uncommon card with art by Ma Mariana Marino Ayala. Uh, multiplayer card, this one, I think. I don't think this is plays in 1v1. I think I'd rather just play Sudden Chill and guarantee the discard. Um, with anything that lets your opponent choose, they're going to choose what's worse for you. If you really want them to get rid of a card, they won't. Uh, if you really need to gain the Lord, I'll find something to discard. It's always the way. <laughs> Two-costed inkable item, Miracle Candle, Abuela's Gift. Banish this item if you have three or more characters in play, gain two lore and remove up to two damage from chosen location. Uh, rare card with art by Kuya JP. Uh, maybe? I, I'm, I'm never a huge fan of items that need banishing. It's you know I don't understand why they just don't make them actions. I suppose you can leave it, play this on a turn before you have three things out and then next turn play something but you're just massively telegraphing that i think um yeah yeah i don't don't love this one unfortunately uh two costed inkable item record player look at this whenever you play a song the chosen character gets minus two strength until the start of your next turn and hit parade your character's name stitch count as having plus one at cost to sing songs common card with art by simone boy fantino 
Uh, this is one we got to reveal on This Week is Ink, where what feels like a lifetime ago now, but was most probably about three weeks. Really cool thematic card. Otherwise, I'm not really sure there's much here to uh, to be that impressed with. Um, anything that sort of sits around and just generates you value from what you're doing anyway is notable, but the fact that it's just reducing strength is, you know, I've always said that strength modifiers are one of my least uh, interesting mechanics in the game. Uh, Stitch is being able to sing up one. I can't think of any mega lines where that's great. Obviously, Rockstar Stitch being able to sing Be Prepared is a bit of a number, really. Rockstar Stitch wants a lot of bodies on the board. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and finally, a couple of locations. First off, a one-costed inkable uh, location. Atlantica Concert Hall. Two on the move costs, six on the willpower, and underwater acoustics. Characters count as having two costs to sing songs whilst here. Uh, common card with art by Alex Shin. If those big sing together cards uh, end up seeing some play, this one might squeeze into a deck just to make that more consistent. But at the moment, having to pay two just to let something turn sideways for a little bit more value. Um, the whole point of singing costs, uh, singing songs, is to free up that ink for you to do other stuff. Here, you're just basically paying ink to play the action. Really, um, yeah. Don't don't think this one's great. Uh, and the other one, a two-costed inkable uh, location, the Underworld River Sticks, a also two on the move cost and six on the willpower. Save a soul whenever a character quests. While here, you may pay three to return a character card from your discard to your hand. So continuing the sort of Hades theme, uh, the Amber theme of bringing stuff back from discard. Don't hate that. Jeremy Adams, by the way, doing a uh, doing the art on this rare card. Uh, Gains you a lore, which we haven't seen on a lot of the locations in this set. There's not much passive lore on them at all, unfortunately. Um, that's two on the move cost is still pretty high. Playing this on two. Uh, moving something to it on turn three. Well, you'd have an empty discard anyway, wouldn't you, at that point? Because you've only played something on one. Uh, yeah, maybe this comes down later on and you try when you're trying to find something to do with your ink. But this is gonna this is basically Four, one, two, three, four, five. This is seven ink to do a thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, this uh, yeah, it's not very good, is it? Never mind. Uh, yeah, Amber not having a great showing. I don't think here. The couple of things I am excited about are uncommons. Basically, uh, I think both the legendaries are build arounds that are going to be fun if you're interested in them, and uh, not fun if you're not. Obviously, the Madrigals I think will make a fun typal deck, but again. If you're not really fussed on that kind of thing, you're going to be ignoring those as well. Uh, so because of that, I don't think Amber's had a great showing here. Some colours uh, got a real glow up uh, this set. I think Emerald has had a fantastic run. Uh, we'll talk about that later. There's some really good ruby stuff as well. And Sapphire, uh, even though I'm not a huge fan of the colour in general, also looks like it's had a lot of fun stuff uh, come to the game this set as well. Uh, Amber, unfortunately, looks like it's taken a bit of a backbench on this one. But hey, they can't all be winners. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the other five colors and lots of other fun stuff here on the channel as we move into ursula's return thanks so much for watching until the next one be good